Happy, Happy birthday, birthday World, World Wide, Wide Web. Web. My name is Nick Breeze. I'm John Satrum. And we run an event series called Dream, or Data Rules Everything Around Me, presented by Mozilla in partnership with Netizen. It's hard to believe that the web is 30 years old. Now that's the web, not the internet. The internet's a bunch of computers connected together with cables and was pretty niche until the web came along. The web brought the rest of us online to share, learn, experiment, and connect with one another. Anyone could carve out their own little piece of cyberspace just by making a simple HTML page. And you could do whatever you want with your website or sites, and you could share it with the rest of the world by putting it on a web server. That way anybody could visit your site, which really just means requesting a copy of your HTML page over HTTP. But this is where things get a little tricky because technically anyone could set up a home server and connect it to the internet, but it's not as easy as writing an HTML page. And even setting up a server with a cloud-based company is a little tricky. That's why these days, lots of folks have opted to create profiles on other people's websites instead of on their own. For example, billions of us have created profiles on a single website run by this nervous looking Android named Mark. Though the web was built to be a wildly decentralized platform, this whole tricky server situation has gotten things looking a lot more centralized. Yeah, and the, the, the wider web is a great place for self-expression, but on Mark's site, there are a lot of rules. For example, he hates it if you don't use your government name. And this isn't MySpace or Tumblr, so no animated GIF backgrounds, or colors, or images at all. You get white. This isn't because of Mark's aesthetic preferences. The reason for all the conformity is because it's easier to commodify our online identities, which consist of way more data than just our real names. If you're watching this video, you're likely already aware that Mark's not the only Android in town that monetizes your online identity and the behavior associated with it, or that they're even able to influence that behavior for further monetization. So now we're in a mess, and people are split on what to do about the web. Some have given up completely and welcome our new robot overlords and say things like privacy is dead, and others are like, this is so screwed up, let's torch it and start over. But some believe there's a middle ground. A little over a couple years ago, Paul Frazee and Tara Vensel started working on a new project called the Beaker Browser. Beaker's really similar to the web browsers that we know, except it has a few unique properties. Instead of requesting websites from servers over the HTTP protocol, Beaker uses the DAT protocol to request websites directly from other people's computers. No servers. That means less barriers to entry for making your own website and more decentralization online. I don't think it makes much sense to talk about completely rebuilding the web. The plane is in the air and we have to fix it as it's flying. Um, and I think that's awesome. I started to think like, well, what do I want the web to look like? What do I want social media to look like? Those are some of the questions that inspired building Beaker. On the web today with HTTP, we depend on a lot of intermediaries. I have a Twitter account, but it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Twitter. Most of the activity on Twitter servers, it's secret. It lives on their servers and there's not much we can do about it. But we said, what if the web used a peer-to-peer -peer protocol instead? How would that change how applications are built? So we built an application called Fritter, which is very similar to Twitter, but monumentally different. What if instead of your profile being stored in a database on Twitter's servers, it was just some files that lived on your own computer. What if your profile was a website? And what if you could use that profile and that website to connect to your other friends' websites? Fritter is simply a skin over user profiles. It just helps you view your feed and view your friend's feed and to post to your feed and gives everybody control over their own identity. Now here's the cool thing. If me, the author of Fritter, if I were to start putting some privacy infringing code into the application, you would be able to see it and you would be able to strip that code out or actually change the algorithm that defines how the feed works. Anyone could layer on top of an existing application and fine tune it to their interests and their tastes. And we don't have that on the web today. If you sign up for Instagram, you have a few fields that you need to fill. Add a photo, what's your name, what's your bio, but that's it. And I think that's really sad because the web is an infinite canvas. It's really easy for me to dream about what the future of the web looks like. The browser is something more than just a tool for consumption, but a tool for creation and exploration as well. And peer-to-peer -peer protocols make that possible. And if we look back to the days of MySpace, and even further back to the days of GeoCities, we have historical evidence that people want to express themselves on web pages, and they're capable of it, even if they're not professional developers. And I'd really love to get back to that and cherish the weirdness and the beauty that comes out of giving people the opportunity to paint on the web.